Thank you, Sunim Saipan. Thank you very much. Yaku, спасибо большое. It's very complicated uh, to speak about serious geopolitical things uh, because I feel the audience, I feel uh, the speakers, uh, and it's very, it's very symbolic <laughs> that I'm sitting between United States and uh, Hungary, uh, Ukraine, and um, I think that the um, uh, reason why I came here is just to say thank you to Hungarians who help us a lot because as Tamas said I'm also an Kentish volunteer uh, despite that I'm political analyst, international journalist, uh, postdoctoral researcher, uh, PhD uh, researcher so I have a lot of different uh, statuses but after the 24th of February all Ukrainians, we changed our uh, social role, social activity. And uh, on the 24th of February, we, uh, we became, uh, became a nation who lives in new reality. The biggest problem of, I think, some Europeans and Americans also, and don't speak now about you, about uh, you, generally, that uh, there is a misunderstanding of uh, seriousness of situation in Ukraine. Because for me, for Ukraine, the war, the war did not start uh, the 24th February. No. It started uh, in February 2014. And uh, there was a hybrid, I call it hybrid, hybrid first aggression or first uh, stage of Russian aggression against Ukraine. And the second aggression happened uh, last year. So it wasn't just a, a question of some mista or mistakes of uh, president of Ukraine or European policy. It was just a plan of uh, Russian Federation to do it. I traveled all post-Soviet countries. I uh, wrote a, lo a lot of articles about Kazakhstan, about Georgia, about Tajikistan, all post-Soviet countries. And I can say you that in every country Russia used different methods of uh, influence on internal policy. So this is geopolitical aspect. And uh, during last year I communicate with a lot of Hungarian different uh, humanitarian organizations. And Hungarians from Hungary, from Romania, all over the world, they help a lot with uh, humanitarian aid. This is fact. And uh, I have a storage, uh, humanitarian storage in Ungvar, in Uzhgorod, and I still cooperate with uh, representatives of Reform Church, for example, from uh, Tisaders, from Solnok, from Saborsat Marberek, from all media who supply us humanitarian aid. That's why I don't see the problems between the societies. We don't have the problems with societies. Uh, we have problems with politicians who are crying like kinder, like babies, you know. It's a problem. And uh, uh, some politicians uh, maybe have different position about geopolitics, about uh, internal relation. Just an hour ago, an hour ago, I took the interview with Jolt Nemet. And Jolt Nemet said that uh, maybe there is a lack of trust between two countries, maybe. Um, the Hungarian-Ukrainian relations is a very complicated topic, and I'm not going to say, speak about it now in this panel, but concerning the most complicated question, which you, you, are, you Thomas, asked me about the forecast, about the, what, uh, what will be the next six months, I would say. It's very difficult to foresee what will be tomorrow. No, when, because I just came here directly from Kyiv. Two days ago I was in Kyiv. Two weeks ago I was in Kherson, on Odessa, in Nikolaev. I know what happened, what's happening inside. And I think that uh, from the realistic point of view, 
I don't see any signs of, uh, of stopping uh, this conflict, the war, in this year or next year. Maybe somebody sitting here uh, see the signs of some kind of uh, tendencies of stopping war. I don't see it. Uh, in contrary, I see the tendency of escalation of the conflict, and not only in Ukraine. Uh, because uh, I think that um, some uh, some political analysts, uh, some journalists, uh, as I said, they did not accept the situation seriously that happened in Ukraine. Now, the same, like they did not accept seriously what happened eight years ago in Donbass. Because now, these tactics of Russia, this is just the tactics of uh, destroying on the one on the uh, attempt to destroy my country because they failed to conquer during one week in uh, February last March so it, they tried to destroy the country on the other hand they tried to improve their geopolitical position in post-Soviet countries in Georgia in Kazakhstan in uh, Uzbekistan in all countries so the the, the conflict, the war can stop tomorrow, theoretically, theoretically, or after, after a month, in a, in a year, I don't know, but the conflict will not stop uh, tomorrow or in a month or in a year. So we are in quite, quite serious uh, situation. And I think that a lot of Europeans, a lot of our friends, partners, they are underestimate the situation. And they, went, they just want to wait what will be uh, in the European Union, what will be in the presidential elections in the United States, what will be uh, in front line in Donbass or in South Africa. And that it's, it's useless to wait. You know? It's useless to wait. And last, I was in the January uh, in Davos, uh, Davos International Conference. I was in Munich Conference in February. I was in Lopsiak in Bratislava. During last year, I traveled all main international events and I took the interviews of all main political figures and I can say that the support of Ukraine is huge. The support of Ukraine is huge and it will increase despite whether somebody wants to, want, uh, to wait or no, but the, 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 the support will increase. And the last thing which I want to say that uh, the end of the war, the end of the war, negotiations, any kind of variation of war depends on the situation on the front line and depends on the level of support. United States, UK, Baltic countries, Poland, Scandinavian countries, Romania and others, they, I think, will try to increase their support of uh, my country. Some countries of Europe will be maybe not active in support, but they will support because neutrality, neutrality is an old-fashioned old uh, concept in, in, in the, in the, in the uh, current reality. So I can speak a lot if you will have some questions or additional questions or moderator will ask me some questions, I will uh, answer. Thank you. Oh, it's it's very complicated, actually, question about the um, uh, them using uh, the weapon of mass destruction. Uh, I am not sure that uh, Russia will use it now. I mean, in the nearest future. Uh, but I'm sure that the situation will escalate. Unfortunately, but um, this is the re reality. What does it mean, escalation? Uh, we don't have, we, I mean the experts, we don't have answer. But I think that in the end of this year, or maybe in the beginning of the next year, Russia will use the hybrid tactics of um, influence in, on, on Ukraine and on uh, neighboring with Ukraine countries. What I want to say, the situation in front line is uh, during, la no, during last months, 
relatively relatively uh, understandable uh, so there is a counter offensive there is offensive for, for Ukrainian army uh, it's not so fast but there is and the, the Russia also did not any active steps to go further so the situation is uh, not acceptable for Russia for Russia and I think that they will use hybrid new forms of hybrid influence on uh, maybe Ukraine and also European Union what I say what I want to say this Wagner situation with Wagner and transferring the soldiers of Wagner from uh, Bakhmut from east of Ukraine to Belarus actually to the border with Poland and Lithuania uh, I'm currently a PhD research and uh, Lithuanian University in in Klaipeda and I know how serious situation in Lithuania also so I think Russia will use uh, new forms of pressure with the help of Wagner on Belarus, uh, on, on, on Poland or Lithuania or some kind of destabilization in Western Balkans or other threats I think they have plan so Russia will keep on pressure on uh, neighboring countries, on Ukraine and uh, uh, it doesn't mean that they will mobilize more people and they will try to go uh, with a new attempt to, to, to attack doesn't mean that they will use but I think they will use hybrid threats uh, I want in the end ask you uh, just rhetoric question uh, are you sure that Russia won't stop the war uh, this is the question which I recommend you ask yourself are you sure really sure that Putin want to stop the war and to the government the military mm -hmm. the Russian military the political establishment of Russia, they are really interested in negotiation. Uh, I'm from Eastern Ukraine. I know uh, civilization of uh, Russia very good. For 90, for 100 percent, I'm sure that they are not interested in any kind of negotiations. They imitate maybe some negotiations, some uh, uh, diplomatic activity, but they have the plan, I think, military plan, and they will try to to go in accordance with this plan of hybrid pressure on Europe, on post-Soviet countries, and this try to destroy Ukraine. Because for uh, for for uh, for Russia, if you analyze their propaganda, they made very simple messages to their audience, to internal audience, and to the world. They want to destroy the the country and our president president of ukraine he said what are the conditions of the negotiations this is the formula of peace of uh, zelensky which was supported by united states by all the countries and the main condition of dutch kind of negotiations is territorial integrity of the country it's very 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 easy to understand but i'm not sure that russia is interested also in uh, some kind of negotiations. They will just want to win time to uh, remobilize, change the tactics and then keep on because it's so obvious for me and it's very strange that it's not so obvious for others. Thank you, Matish. Well, um, a lot of people in Europe and in the world, they think that uh, the there can be some changes inside Russia. Mm, I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty not sure. I would say <laughs> about all about this because uh, uh, there is two expert opinion, ex expert opinion. Sorry about the future of Russia. One expert say that uh, there will be some social transformation of Russia in the nearest future. The other experts say that uh, it's, uh, it's um, impossible because uh, the conflict and the war 
which Russia started. It's not just a um, personal uh, personal idea of Putin. I mean, some experts say that it was just a decision by by Putin. I spoke several months ago with Mikhail Khodorkovsky, who lived in Europe, and he said that the the conflict and all what happened inside Russia it's very very like he said personal personalized. It means which connected very with the person of Putin. But I don't believe it. I think that the uh, decision to begin this war eight years ago, not even yet nine years ago, and uh, God bless you, uh, and uh, the second uh, decision to continue the war was the collective decision of uh, the political elite in Russian Federation. And uh, they, today Putin, tomorrow will not be Putin another political leader. I'm not sure that they change their uh, attitude towards Ukraine as a state, towards United States as a rival, towards European Union as a potential partner, towards post-Soviet uh, reality, towards China and others. So I think they will keep on using uh, hybrid methods to promote their vision of, um, of current situation. That's why, unfortunately, the situation inside Russia will not change. I don't believe this. And I, when, the, when there was this story with Prigozhin, when everybody uh, in Europe following the news, what will happen uh, inside Russia, I didn't even, did not read the news. For me, it was very obvious that it will stop during uh, two one day. And it's actually stopped during one day because of uh, lack of support of uh, Prigozhin and other things inside Russian Federation. That's why, unfortunately, I don't see any signs or, or any prerequisites of changing political situation in Russian Federation. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Matthias, for for question. I start. I will start from Russia. Uh, so I don't believe that Russia will be democratized uh, in the nearest future. We have the quite uh, opposite uh, tendency. So this country will go to more Asiatic system of uh, ruling. It will be more similar to China, uh, the terminal policy, not similar to European Union. Unfortunately, fortunately. I don't know, it depends on the population of Russia. So the Russia in the nearest 10 years will be more uh, autocratic, more, I would say, uh, more between auto authoritarian and totalitarian system. Concerning the uh, future of Ukraine and democratization, there are two questions. One question concerning the European Union, another question concerning NATO. 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 Uh, the integration of Ukraine in European Union in, in the European Union. This is just a question of time. Uh, we have already uh, got uh, the candidate status. It's a huge exam. It's a huge exam, and I, we should confess that it's a serious ex uh, exam for. Ukrainian society because we are in a state of war. It's very difficult to exercise the reforms during the war. But we uh, will do it because our, uh, our choice is obvious. This is European Union. And the European Union also supports Ukraine. Concerning the NATO, mm, it's a complicated question. I'm not sure that in the nearest future, NATO will have a unanimous decision about the membership of Ukraine in NATO. But I'm sure that some countries like United States and UK, Baltic countries, will propose a special proposition, a proposal sorry, for Ukraine concerning the military era, uh, military union. Uh, so I think will be a new form of cooperation between the United States, Great Britain and Ukraine and some countries 
who support us and will support us. It can be within the NATO or it can be separately from NATO, depends on the inter, uh, mutual agreements. So I think the next summit, NATO summit, which will be in uh, Washington, if I'm not mistaken, will define more accurately uh, the, the framework, or the system, or the format for future cooperation between Ukraine and real, real our allies. It's very easy to understand. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for question. Uh, concerning the national minorities, languages, and other things, my native language is Russian language. Uh, my second native language is Ukrainian language. Because I was born in east of Ukraine, in Donetsk, in Donbass, and uh, historically it's a very complicated question of languages. Not question just of Hungarian or Romanian. General language and that doesn't matter. Language, or I would say mm, the politics in the uh, language sector <laughs> always were very, very complicated because the politicians used uh, this topic. And um, after the beginning of the second aggression, I mean last year, all national minorities, all national minorities in Ukraine, Ro Romans, the Hungarians, the Crimean Tatars, they all supported Ukraine. I know personally the Ukrainians of Hungarian origin who are now in the front line and defense Ukraine. I know the Ukrainians of Romanian origin who defend Ukraine. I know the Tatars, Crimean Tatars, or Ukrainians of <laughs> Crimean Tatar origin, ethnicity, who defend Ukraine. So they all uh, supported their country, their country. And um, it would be, for me, uh, hard to imagine all society mobilized against the enemy and the representatives of one definite minority would say no 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 it's no, not our war we are not going to interfere uh, we just wait fortunately it did not happen so all minorities supported uh, their country their country and i think that as i mentioned as we get the status of candidate, candidate status to the European Union, I think the future of all languages uh, will, be, will be resolved on the basis of two fundamental, fundamental things. First, the, the legislation, the practice of language disputing, uh, of um, resolving of the problems of language of national minorities which were in the European Union during the last 60 or 50 years. And the second base, this is political agreements, unfortunately. So the mutual, the bilateral agreements should define maybe uh, the status of uh, the languages uh, of using the languages uh, on not only the minority of, for example, uh, one national minority in Ukraine, <laughs> but also <laughs> the using of Ukrainian language of Ukrainian minority in European country. Because millions of Ukrainians now live in European Union. You know it better than me. And uh, there are some countries where there is more than one million Ukrainians. So I think they also can use their language as a possible language uh, of some kind of uh, some kind of using in the official uh, place where they live. It, it was the practice of European Union. 
for many years. Uh, you know the example of uh, Slovenia and Italy, for example, the agreement between uh, Italy and Slovenia using the Slovenian Italian language. I, I, I know this problem very good, and I can give you a lot of examples. But uh, unfortunately, as I said, politicians use this topic for their own purposes. And uh, the, the society will find the question, uh, will find the answer, sorry, on this question. And uh, we are in one commonwealth, in one uh, uh, political reality, in European community. So we have to find the consensus about all these things. But I'm not sure that it will be now. Because in the state of war, the question of uh, language, uh, minorities and other things, they are important. But the surviving of the nation and surviving of the state is a priority now. So it's like, a, like you, you're in a hospital and somebody comes to you and you are dying and say, give me some money for, for buying the bread. You know? But you are dying. You think about other things. And uh, you have to survive. You have to be uh, stronger. Then you have to decide your problems. So Ukraine war, uh, Ukraine win and had, had already won the war. The question is just uh, what will be the end of this war for Russia. Because the main idea of Russian tactics was to use all the methods, all, the national minority, the language, the hybrid pressure, the pressure on Lithuania, the uh, questions of uh, historical background. So they use a lot of methods to destabilize the Ukraine. And they still continue to use this. That's why now when Ukraine, uh, our army, showed enormous uh, enormous strength during the last year and it changed completely the plans of Russian Federation and now they don't have one plan what to do uh, all these things like language and other things can can be in favor of Russia during the war so the the future consensus about national minority, minorities and other things will be found because we are within the European reality. But now Russia use all these things for their own propaganda. This is a problem. So we also have to think not only about one side problem, there is another side of problem. And all these things used by Russians to, to, to uh, prepare another hybrid threat for pressure on Ukraine and, and Europe. I think it's complicated to do, to make it because we raised a lot of questions about geopolitics, about Hungarian Ukrainian relations, about the future station in front line. I think that the main idea and the main interest of the audience sitting, who are still sitting here, <laughs> is to understand uh, what is going on and what will be tomorrow or in six months months because the future of Europe and the future of a lot of people depends on situation in, in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, I'm quite I'm quite realistic person and um, I don't want to say you some uh, things which which I do not believe and I don't believe in the in the possible end of the war or negotiations even this year or next year. I do believe that maybe in the next of uh, in the end of next year there will be some kind of attempt to to find some kind of consensus maybe. Why and then in the next of ne at the end of next year because then there will be the eve of elections in the United States and I think Putin waiting for the elections in the United States it's quite obvious for me also it's a very uh, simple logic of Putin 
and uh, simultaneously everybody will fall in the situation in front line. And uh, the Ukraine will keep on uh, liberating its territory. That's why I think that now any kind of negotiations, whether it will be mediator, Turkey or other country, they will be useless. And uh, that's why I think that uh, the tendency is not good in this year and maybe next year. Thank you. Uh, you know that I think it's um, uh, it's a question uh, quite uh, provocative, you know. <laughs> but I used I used I used I I used I used what what I I didn't sorry ah okay 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 okay. Thanks for second time. I, I, <laughs> I hear the question. You can ask the third time, but the answer will be the same. You know, that it's quite provocative question, and uh, uh, I cannot give you the answer because uh, I'm not, I'm not the person who can uh, give you uh, the accurate answer because uh, I have the same answer why it was installed there. So, I'm not a uh, local in Mukachevo, I'm from another region of Ukraine, but as I know, it was installed by the initiative of some politicians, local also, I mean local in Transcarpathia. <laughs> but now it, it was dismantled also by the initiative of politicians. This question lies in, 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 uh, in the question of politics. And uh, depends on the situation and foreign policy or other things, the politicians give some initiatives to do this thing, other thing. If the question would lie in the, in the relation between the nations, oh, between the nations, I think uh, it would be more stable. But unfortunately, politicians, they use uh, the situation like they want, like they want, sorry. Question to politicians, not to citizen of Ukraine, you know. Uh, thank you for question. As I said, this is a question of, um, uh, what is your name? What is your name? Huh? Yes, okay. Uh, I will answer. Uh, as I said, uh, as I said, it's not my question, but I will answer. <laughs> uh, because, uh, as, me, as uh, Matthias said, it's, uh, thing, this problem lies in the uh, political sphere. Uh, Matthias hinted, hinted, he said that it's a problem of local politicians. Local politicians. And... Um, uh, concerning the central of power, as I said, central authority, uh, I, I, I think that um, in current situation it's very complicated to find uh, some kind of uh, quick answer on this problem because I saw two roles here when I come from Transylvania. I saw two roles in Tatabania. When you go through Hungary, there is a huge plural uh, in Tatarmani. I saw a plural in Munkach, uh, in Mukachevo, in the castle of, uh, of uh, Mokachev Castle, Polonok, if I cannot mistake, it's called. So, um, uh, it was, the state it was, but why, uh, why the situation has happened, I think it requires more thorough. Uh, analysis to find the answers what happened here. Thank you. Thank for uh, for question. As as I say, you have to understand the reality now in Ukraine. Uh, as I understood, you asked two questions. One concerning the uh, the voices of the people who want to 
negotiate, yes, and the other question concerning the national minorities. Uh, two hours ago I was participated as a, as a audience, as you will, in the previous panel, not here, but in the other ten, and there was the same question, but not to me, but to Hungarian speaker. I don't want to say his name, you know him, but he answered very, very clever. Uh, he said, I mean, the question why the negotiations now is impossible, yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, in negotiation for? Yeah, yeah, for peace. He said that the conflict in Ukraine is not conflict between only Russia and Ukraine. There is also geopolitical things, no? and <laughs> it would be it would be very wise to ask about this our American friends, you know, because I cannot answer all the questions, you know. If we speak about geopolitics, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> but concerning the national minorities, I would say that it's an important question and I'm sure that there will be solution found. But now, as I said, the the priorities is the surviving of, surviving of the country. Because if the country will form as a European country and it will be formed, the question of national minorities, of languages, will be resolved. But if our allies uh, will not keep on supporting us, it will, it will be very complicated for us. The same I can ask you, you and everybody, not only about national minorities, I can ask you about the more support from Hungary to Ukraine. As I can say, why you don't give this or this? But I understand the political reality of Hungary, that you give what you can give now. That's why situation with national minorities uh, like it is now. It's completely, it's very complicated to change because you have to, and I also have to, as analytics, always think about my next step, about every word which I say. And everybody should understand that if you do something, Russia can use it now, now, as a, as a tool to, to influence on the situation. So, Ukraine now has resistance against Russia, against Belarus, against Iran against North Korea, everybody support Russia, gave the drones. Yes, we have support from our Western allies, but uh, the question now is to give more support from other countries also. And the question of national minorities and languages, other things, uh, now I think can be used by Russian propaganda in not appropriate way. You have to understand this thing. They will use everything to create the problem between Ukraine and Hungary, between Ukraine and European Union, and between other countries. They will use everything. That's why we have to be wise. Give you the answer on the behalf of the government, but I know that the this topic, this question, is always as a, one of the key priority topics between the uh, Hungarian government and between the Ukrainian government. You know that Major Levente, Major Levente, Deputy of Foreign Minister, always he came to Ukraine every two weeks to Transcarpathia. He brings humanitarian aid. So I think that the, this topic now in the, some kind of negotiations. I'm not sure. and. I think you don't write that you say that this question, this question is out of, uh, out of uh, 
uh, priority. I think it it discussed, but not maybe publicly. But uh, I think that uh, this question will be resolved, but in the future. I don't believe that it will be resolved now. I tell you like, like a expert what I see. I cannot give the answer why uh, somebody doesn't do it because I, the same I can ask you why somebody did, don't give us more weapon, for example. Now, this is the same question. I can ask everybody here. And not only this, by the way, question. You know. But we should, we should, we should emphasize the, the priorities where we have good relations. We have good relations in humanitarian uh, cooperation, in, uh, in economical relation, and Hungary helps uh, Ukraine a lot. It's a fact. It's a fact. And the society helped a lot. It's a fact. But politics, it's another sector. And not always it's possible to find some kind of consensus, unfortunately.